All right, as promised in the other video uh, regarding glycolysis, we're going to look at some glycolysis enzymes of note. Um, first one's going to be hexokinase. This is going to be the very first enzyme that you see in glycolysis. It's going to trap the glucose that's in the blood that enters the cell. It's going to trap that glucose in the form of glucose 6-phosphate, so it doesn't leave the cell. Um, this is a very important enzyme. It's not the rate limiting step yet, however, it is important because you'll uh, you'll be able to trap that glucose in. It's going to need ATP, so it is ATP dependent. Um, you're going to invest your energy in uh, with this enzyme. So how do you control it? Well, insulin is going to be a great one to start. Insulin is going to stimulate hexokinase. So let's think about it. why does insulin stimulate it? Well, insulin, your body releases insulin when you have high blood sugar. Let's see, yeah. when you have increased blood glucose, your body releases insulin. So you have a whole bunch of uh, insulin in your bloodstream here. Your body wants to get rid of it. Glucose in the bloodstream is bad. High amounts of glucose in the bloodstream is bad. You're going to release insulin. It's going to leave the capillary. It's going to go into the cells. It's going to convert glucose to glucose 6-phosphate, so you're going to trap that glucose in the cell. So, if your insulin is going to be in response to a high blood glucose, it's going to stimulate hexokinase enzyme. Um, so, we can think conversely, uh, what's going to negatively inhibit it? Well, easy, glucagon. Insulin and glucagon are natural enemies. Insulin stimulates glucose to go into cells, glucagon stimulates glucose to leave cells. So when you don't have very much in the bloodstream, uh, when you don't have very much glucose in the bloodstream, glucagon is going to be stimulated, pouring out in, or, uh, glucose into the bloodstream from the cells. But right now we're talking about this enzyme, glucose to glucose 6-phosphate. It's going to be stimulated when you have insulin and inhibited when you have glucagon. A few other things to note, uh, a high product ratio to reactant. So if you have a whole bunch of glucose 6-phosphate with very little glucose, it's going to inhibit this enzyme. It's going to say, oh, whoa, we need, to, we need to catch up in the glycolysis pathway. We have too much glucose 6-phosphate. So glucose 6-phosphate is also going to inhibit hexokinase enzyme. And then finally, uh, acetyl-CoA Uh, Acetyl-CoA is going to be a factor later on down the road, um, past glycolysis. Um, when you have a buildup of that product, that's going to say, whoa, 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 we need to back up. The very first enzyme in the pathway, hold up a little bit, we, we need to catch up. Um, so acetyl-CoA is also going to negatively um, impact hexokinase, slowing down that reaction of glucose to glucose 6-phosphate. Uh, bear with me a second while I draw up the next reaction. Uh, this is going to be the rate limiting step. Phosphofructokinase 1. This is a big one. This is going to be the rate limiting step. RLS. Rate limiting step of the whole glycolysis pathway. Um, it's going to be an important one. This is the one that converts fructose 6-phosphate. And it's going to take that and convert it into fructose 1,6-bisphosphate. Bisphosphate, BP, same thing. Um, again, this is going to require an ATP. Remember, this is our uh, reaction that also was our energy in phase. So we're going to invest ATP. It comes out as an ADP. Um, so we have... Phosphofructokinase 1. I'm going to take a little bit of time talking about this because um, whether you're in school or in medicine, this is going to be a big one. Um, lots of things impact it, and it's got a little step cousin named PFK2 that we're going to talk about. But PFK1 is the enzyme that converts fructose 6-phosphate into the fructose 1,6-bisphosphate. So, where do we begin? Well, let's talk about what stimulates PFK1. Um, we've got ADP. Well, how does this make sense? If the body has a whole bunch of ADP 
which is the adenosine diphosphate, um, it's not the usable energy. ATP is the usable energy. So this just means that we have, we used to have a lot of ATP, it got broken down into ADP, and the body doesn't have very much energy anymore. They used up all their energy. So a high um, ADP is going to stimulate PFK enzyme to go through the whole glycolysis pathway and create more. I mean, we're out. We need to get more. We want more. We want more. My favorite commercial these days. Um, however, so we've got the ADP, likely AMP, adenosine monophosphate. It just means two phosphates, one phosphate. Um, this is even worse. You need, you need a lot more energy. But both of these will stimulate the phosphokinase 1 enzyme. Um, then there's another one. Don't get lost with me here. Fructose. I'll write it out, 2,6-phosphate, there's biphosphate, two phosphates there. Fructose 2,6-biphosphate, not an enzyme, PFK2, this, the PFK1 puts the phosphate at the 1 position, PFK2 puts the phosphate at the 2 position, okay, I see where you're going with this, you're saying. So fructose 2,6-bisphosphate is going to stimulate PFK1. It's like the little cousin that, you know, is really competitive. PFK always outshines them. However, this is going to stimulate PFK1. It's going to push PFK to work harder. Um, the, little, the little cousin that, you know, competing with, PFK1 is number one. That is going to be your number one enzyme. This is going to stimulate it, and I'll actually show you how later on. Um, then finally, let's talk about what inhibits it. What inhibits the PFK phosphofructokinase 1 enzyme? Um, well, like I said, ADP and AMP stimulate it. A high level of ATP which means your body has enough energy. You don't need to keep going through glycolysis. You have enough. ATP is going to inhibit uh, the rate limiting step. Uh, also, likewise, citrate. I'm not going to cover why, um, just know that citrate is going to inhibit that. And then cyclic AMP, we will show you where that kind of factors in. So um, now that you have all this down, I'm just going to erase it and show you why PFK2 kind of comes into play here. So we can go two different ways. We have all this fructose 6-phosphate from, uh, from our enzymes already. Our glucose got converted into glucose 6-phosphate eventually gets converted to fructose 6-phosphate. Okay, well, this can get converted down its normal pathway into 1,6-bisphosphate, or it can get converted into fructose 2,6-bisphosphate. And that was using your PFK2 enzyme. So PFK1 does this run, PFK2 does this. Well, what is Fructose 2,6-bisphosphate, I already said, this is going to stimulate this enzyme. This is the little cousin uh, that's going to push the PFK1 enzyme to its max, kick it into overdrive. Great. Well, that PFK2 enzyme, this one, is going to be inhibited by high levels of cyclic AMP, CAMP. So high levels of CAMP are going to inhibit this enzyme. And when you inhibit this, not very much of this gets made. When you have not very much fructose 2,6-bisphosphate, you're not going to get very much fructose 1,6-bisphosphate because you're going to inhibit this enzyme. So again, let me repeat this. High levels of CAMP cuts down this enzyme. When you cut down that enzyme, you don't get there that much of this when you don't have very much fructose 2,6-bisphosphate, you will cut down your PFK1 enzyme, therefore slowing down or even stopping glycolysis for the moment. So, um, what? let's go back to cyclic AMP. When you have glucagon, you have high levels of CAMP. When you have glucagon, you have low... Uh, glucagon is low bloodstream sugar.
just make sure you can see this. Uh, you have low bloodstream sh sugar, glucose, sugar. Uh, when you have low bloodstream glucose, you don't want to keep using all that glucose in your cell. You want to release it. So uh, high level glucagon will lead to high levels of CAMP, which will decrease your PFK, which will stop glycolysis, and hopefully keep some of that glucose that's over here before coming into fructose 6-phosphate, you're going to release that back into the bloodstream. Um, likewise, uh, insulin. Insulin will decrease your CAMP levels for this sake, and decreased CAMP levels will uh, stimulate PFK2. So insulin is when you have high glucose in your blood, you want to put it into cells. So you're going to stimulate this to go through glycolysis. Um, lastly, once you get this, go through it a couple times, you know, make sure you understand what stimulates it, what inhibits it, since this is the rate limiting step. If you're being tested on this material, uh, this is an excellent, that's excellent test question. Um, I've encountered plenty over the days. Um, you know, if, if, if I had to write a test question, it would be over that regulation of the PFK1 enzyme. It requires ATP, you could frame it that way, what stimulates it, what inhibits it, just know it. And then also I said star this enzyme in my previous video, pyruvate kinase enzyme. Oh man, this is a good one. Let me just make sure you can see it again. I'm not sure if I'm writing it too high up. PFK, or pyruvate kinase enzyme. Uh, excellent one. Phospho you know, pyruvate gets converted finally into your star player pyruvate. And this is our end goal. Um, so this is the last enzyme in the glycolysis pathway. So let's talk about it a little bit. Um, let's start with what inhibits it because this one's kind of a no-brainer. High levels of ATP. ATP is going to inhibit this enzyme. Well, let's think why. When you have high levels of ATP, you don't need to keep going through glycolysis because the point of glycolysis is to ultimately create ATP. And pyruvate is an excellent molecule. It will create you a lot of ATP. But if you have high ATP, you don't need a lot of pyruvate. You don't need to keep making more. So it's going to negatively inhibit this enzyme. Um, let's talk about what stimulates it though. Let's say that you have decreased ATP. Decreased ATP is going to stimulate this pyruvate kinase. It's going to take off the brakes. It's going to stimulate it. Also, insulin. Insulin is the hormone that I just talked about. It's also going to affect the pyruvate kinase. Insulin is released when you have high blood glucose. When you have high blood glucose, you want to put it into the cell. Why not stimulate the glycolysis pathway once it's in the cell? That'll keep it locked in. Um, also, fructose 1,6-bisphosphate. Fructose 1,6-bisphosphate. So that was the uh, that was a PFK enzyme. PFK1 created uh, fructose 6-phosphate into fructose 1,6-bisphosphate. When you have high levels of this. It'll stimulate the very last enzyme to keep getting rid of, to try and get rid of this high concentration of fructose 1,6-bisphosphate. You don't want to back it up, so that's why it's going to stimulate this pyruvate kinase enzyme. Um, this, that's good enough for the uh, regulation of some of these glycolysis enzymes. Let's actually move on to the TCA cycle now.